Okay, everyone, let's take a look at a slightly different uh, version of the equation. Um, again, we're still looking for restrictions, okay? I want to know what the restrictions are on the variable before I even start to solve this one here, okay? And notice it's a radical equation. And with the radical equation, remember, there are, there are going to be uh, restrictions that come from two different places here. One is going to come from the, inside the radical itself, and the other is going to come from what the radical is equivalent to. Now, this one's a little different than what we've done before because of the quadratic that's underneath the radical here. But actually, the, uh, sorry about that. <laughs> sorry about that. Okay, so the, the first restriction here is going to be that the radicand there has got to be greater than or equal to zero. Now, there's a couple of different ways that you could solve something like this or to determine what the interval is that goes with this particular expression here. Uh, one of them is to factor out the three, and so you're left with x squared minus four is greater than or equal to zero, and then factor this down because that's a difference of squares. And so what you get here is this three times x minus two times x plus two is greater than or equal to zero. Now, what we've got here is a quadratic. And what I like to do with my class here is I like to go back and utilize some of the stuff that we learned earlier in that chapter on quadratics to answer a question like this. I know, for example, that this quadratic is going to have an x-intercept here at negative two and at positive two. I know that the parabola is going to open upwards because the leading coefficient here is positive. So the parabola is going to look something like that, like a little better than that, but you get the idea. Okay, it's going to open up. It's going to go through negative two and two here. Now, I'm interested in the intervals where this parabola is greater than or equal to zero. Now, bear in mind that when, if I was to write this out, I would make y equal to this. Okay, so this expression here shows me how the y variable depends on x. This whole thing is y. So I'm asking where is y greater than or equal to zero? And that occurs when the parabola is above this line, the x-axis. And that's true if x is less than or equal to negative two or if x is greater than or equal to positive two. Okay, now I'm gonna come back to this in just a minute here, but this, so that's the interval that we're looking at here. Now another way that you could have done this, okay, is to, when we got down here, three x squared minus 12 is greater than or equal to zero, if you'd rather, you could have taken uh, and made this, sorry, 3x squared is greater than or equal to positive 12, and then divided by 3. Okay, dividing by a positive 3 doesn't change the direction of the sign here. And now when you take the square root of this, bear in mind what this is saying. It's saying that if you square some number, the result is going to be greater than 4. So if you take a look at your, at your number line here, that's going to occur whenever you pick values greater than or equal to 2, and here's the part that most people forget about, or less than or equal to negative two. Because if you squared negative three, for example, you'd get positive nine, which is bigger than four. So oftentimes we write this as the absolute value of x would be greater than or equal to two. And again, that means the same thing. It's going to be from two forward and from negative two backward. Okay, either way, we're getting this same restriction here that x is less than negative two, x is greater than two. Now. That doesn't answer the question for us completely yet because remember, the radical is equal to a linear expression here. Now remember, a radical can only produce positive values, okay? So the left-hand side, okay, when all is calculated there, is only producing positive values, which means the right-hand side can only be equal to positive values, which means it's gotta be greater than, or sorry, I shouldn't just say positive, it's or equal to zero. In which case, x is greater than or equal to negative five. Now this puts us in kind of a neat little position here because there's a, a neat set of restrictions here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw the number line out again and I'm gonna identify the, the numbers that are significant to me. So here's the zero, zero is always significant. Well, I shouldn't say that. Zero is just an interesting little boundary here. Uh, here's negative two and then out here is negative five. Now from our first set of restrictions here, we found that our restrictions are from negative two backwards from positive two forwards. Our other restriction, the one that we just found here, says it's gotta be greater than or equal to negative five. And so the overall restriction is going to come from the overlap of these two. So we see that we're going to have, x is restricted to being either from negative five out to negative two, together with values of x greater than two. And so that's your overall restriction for this particular equation.